Hi, welcome to Caternix Corner. My name's Terry. So you've decided that you want to get into uh, keeping Caternix quail, but you're not quite sure um, how to go about it or the equipment and materials that you're going to need prior to getting into the quail. Uh, hopefully in this video, we can cover most of that and uh, give you a good idea of how to get started and where to look as far as um, buying the equipment that you need or the incubators or the feeders and waterers and also where to get your chicks or your um, hatching eggs from. Uh, first and foremost and probably the most important thing is housing for the quail. Um, whether you decide to build uh, battery type cages like these um, for uh, indoor use or out in your garage or in your shed or in your barn, um, these cages work really well or if you plan on keeping your cages outside um, underneath a shade tree uh, or in an aviary type setting where the birds have a more naturalistic setting. Um, we have some videos on this channel that shows how to build uh, this style of cage. These cages are really well suited for indoor use or in a building where um, you don't have to worry about predators and neighborhood cats and whatnot getting to your quail. Um, and the reason for that is, is some of the, some of these cages actually have rollout trays where the eggs can roll forward and that leaves the cage open and the birds vulnerable to anything that could fit in there. You know, a snake, a raccoon could reach up in there or rats could actually climb up in there. So, um, we have some videos on our channel and I'm gonna put some links down below in the description on how to build this style of cage. Um, but if you do a search on, uh, on YouTube here, you can find plenty of build videos for different types of caging, uh, including setting up a good outdoor um, secure caging system for your birds or building a, a really nice aviary that you could set up, make it look, you know, really natural and possibly get your birds to go broody and uh, lay and hatch eggs out there in the aviary. So, like I say, the most important thing in the caging is making sure that it's predator proof. You want the wire gauge heavy enough and the opening small enough to where a snake cannot fit through there, a raccoon cannot reach their paws through and grab the birds, um, or rats, they'll do the same thing. So when you're looking at your cages, uh, just be sure to keep in mind that they must be predator proof. And also, if your birds are outside and you use the uh, J feeder type, J feeder style feeder, uh, just remember that the top of that feeder is open. So an animal, a rat or whatever, could actually go down in through the feed and get into the cage. So if you're gonna use a J feeder type style, I would definitely rig up some type of uh, either a mesh or a solid, solid metal covering for that feeder. But we'll go into that in a little bit uh, here. Um, I would assume most of you are probably going to order hatching eggs uh, because hatching eggs are one of the easiest and cheapest way to get started with quail. And there's not a whole lot of breeders that ship live birds. There are a few that do but uh, a lot of them won't just because of the what you have to go through and able to ship the birds the materials needed to ship the birds and uh, sometimes the mortality rate can be pretty high uh, trying to ship a live bird but okay let's go into feeders again um, for feeders um, basically when you start out you could use um, for the chicks uh, you could actually get away with when they're really young putting the feed on a paper towel in the bottom of their cage. Um, I do this for my chicks that are about two, between you know hatching and three days old, I'll just pour the feed on the, the ground and let them find it. But once they reach three weeks old to a week, I switch over to this style feeder. Um, it's got like 32 openings on it. And uh, the chicks will climb inside here, which is no big deal. But once they get about a week and a half old, they're getting a little bit too big, to fit through the holes and they can't uh, <clears throat> they can't climb in and, and poop on the food so uh, another type of feeder and these are available at uh, like a tractor supply or any type of feed store usually carries these uh, they're just your standard poultry feeder um, another feeder that you could actually make that works really well for 
chicks that are say a week and a half um, to two weeks old or older it works really well are just these standard uh, shoebox type feeders uh, basically you could pick this shoebox up it's a plastic sterilite uh, shoebox they call it uh, at a Walmart or a Target store they're like 89 cents a piece and then using a hole saw drill you some one inch holes all around the feeder um, maybe two inches up off the bottom inch and a half to two inches off the bottom and then you just pour your feed in here cap it off and put it in the cage uh, the nice thing about this feeder is it does reduce waste um, especially if you don't fill it all the way up up to the bottom of the holes uh, if you, you leave it down a little bit uh, you won't have as much waste if you, if you fill it up all the way to the bottom holes you are going to get a little bit of waste but that will get you started for your feeders um, now as far as waters um, what I use uh, from the time the chicks hatch until the time they go into a grow out pen and actually start using the uh, automatic watering cups I use these little quart containers with the small basin on them and uh, the reason you want to use this smaller basin is because the chicks like to go swimming they for some reason are attracted to the water they want to jump in it and they'll get wet they get chilled and then a lot of times they end up dying so you can find these also at a feed store they're also available online on amazon um, and they will work for the first uh three to four weeks of their life um once, once, like I say, once they get around three weeks to four weeks old, they're old enough to go into a grow out pen and learn to use the uh, automatic watering cups. Okay, so you've got your caging set up, you've got your waterers and your feeders ready. Uh, you're pretty much ready to uh, order your eggs. But prior to ordering your eggs, uh, you do need to make sure that you have a way to hatch out those eggs. And uh, there are several um, entry level incubators that you can pick up. For rel they're relatively inexpensive, under $100, and several of them that I've seen and I've actually used uh, work out really well. Um, one of the incubators is a, it's called a Little Giant model. It's just a styrofoam incubator. It's available in a uh, forced air or a non-forced air. So they call it a still air incubator. And uh, they start at around $55, and uh, they do a good job of uh, incubating your eggs you'll also need unless you plan on turning by hand you'll also need an egg turner um, these egg turners I believe run around fifty dollars and uh, when you when you first order them they usually come with uh, chicken egg rails they call these things rails uh, they usually come with a chicken egg rail in there uh, you can replace those rails and buy quail rails It'll cost you about an extra 20, 25 bucks for the quail rails, but that will give you uh, more openings to place your eggs in. Um, this, this set of quail rails will hold 120 eggs here. Uh, actually, 119 because I never put an egg near the uh, Turner motor because that Turner motor does get a little bit warm. So, uh, yeah, like I say, they're available online, and I'm going to put a links down below to most of this stuff um, if it's available on Amazon. So uh, you could also turn by hand. If you've got an incubator that doesn't have an egg turner in it or that style of an incubator or that style of an egg turner for the little giant or the hovabator model incubators, um, some incubators like the uh, Nurture Right 360s, the uh, Brinzias, um, the uh, I can't think of the name of the other one, um, uh, the, the jo Genoel 12. Um, they all come with egg turners, so you don't have to worry about having, buy, purchasing an egg turner separately. Okay, so you've got your incubator and your egg turners covered, and you're pretty much ready to order your eggs. Um, obviously, if you're starting out uh, with, with uh, live birds, you don't need the incubator, but I highly recommend that you get one because once your birds mature and they start laying eggs, you're most likely going to want to start hatching out some of your own eggs. Okay, when looking for uh, hatching eggs, most people will order from uh, breeders who sell their eggs online through either a personal website, some uh, sell on eBay, and others sell on Facebook through a, an auction uh, site. Um, 
When you're looking for a breeder to purchase eggs from, first thing you want to look for is to make sure that that breeder is NPIP certified and AI clean. Uh, this is just going to ensure that the eggs that you're getting are coming from a healthy and clean stock. Um, you also want to uh, check with the breeder and see that he has a good hatch rate guarantee. Uh, most of the larger breeders give you a 50% hatch rate guarantee, which basically just means that if you order 100 eggs, they're guaranteeing that at least 50% of them will hatch out. You'll also want to look for a breeder who has a long history of successfully shipping eggs that arrive at their destination uh, intact. Um, a lot of breeders will package their eggs in these foam inserts, which has a cover that goes over the top and bottom. And they will place these inside a priority mail shipping box. And uh, in some cases, breeders will actually double box it. They'll take that first box, place it inside another box, and ship that to you. And that's just going to ensure that your eggs uh, are a little bit more protected um, should there be a little, you know, damage through the postal system. Okay, so the day comes and your eggs arrive. Uh, what should you do? Uh, first thing after unboxing your eggs, uh, what I do is I leave them in this foam insert and I set them on a counter or somewhere where they're protected, they're not going to get damaged, and uh, I let them sit for 12 to 24 hours. And the reason for this is, is you're just letting the egg settle a little bit. There's an air cell inside the egg that needs to be positioned in a certain position and uh, you just want to make sure that that's right. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail on the you know, air cell and whatnot. There are videos on the channel here that discuss that, but this being a beginner video, we're just going to keep it simple. Okay, so while your eggs are resting or uh, setting for 12 to 24 hours, now is a good time to fire up your incubator and let it run. Uh, to, one, to bring it up to temperature and to uh, just make sure that everything's stabilized in the incubator prior to setting your eggs. <clears throat> Once your eggs have uh, settled and it's 12 to 24 hours have passed, you go ahead and place your eggs in the egg turners, pointy, egg, pointy end of the egg down, and then the egg turner obviously will be placed inside the incubator. Now some incubators um, don't have this style of an uh, egg turner. Uh, you just lay the eggs in the incubator on their side and they have a device that usually you know rolls the eggs around basically turning the egg so <clears throat> uh, your eggs are going to take anywhere from 16 to up to 20 days to hatch um, normal incubation time is around uh, 17 days for Caternix quail eggs uh, but they can't start as early as 16 days hatching and can run as late as 20, 21 days hatching. <clears throat> okay, so your, your eggs, uh, oh, let's go back into that. Uh, on day 14, you've been incubate, incubating your eggs, and on day 14, you will want to put your eggs into what's known as lockdown. Basically, all you're gonna do is take your eggs out of the egg turner, putting them in a hatching tray, or laying them in the bottom of the incubator, and uh, just let them sit like that until they hatch out. At that time is also the time when you want to raise your humidity levels up. Um, briefly, uh, humidity levels during the first 14 days should be between 40 and 50 percent. And then when you go into lockdown, you want to bump them up to between 65 and 75 percent. Um, there's a lot more um, about that on some of our other videos. You can watch them. Um, I'll try to put some links in the description down below for those videos also. Okay, so hatching day is here. Uh, you notice that you've got eggs pipping, you've got chicks popping out of the eggs like popcorn, and uh, you're kind of nervous, you don't really know what to do. What you want to do is just leave them alone. The chicks can stay in the incubator in the hatching box for up to 24, even 48 hours before they need to be removed. Um, but basic rule of thumb is once the chicks are dry and fluffy, you can take them out of the hatching box and place them into a brooder. Now, what I use for a brooder is a plastic 72-quart, uh, I believe it is, Sterilite tub. It's about uh, 36 inches by 18 inches wide, and that makes a good, uh, 
brooder for the first week or so of their life. And if you don't have a whole lot of birds in there, you can actually keep them in one of those up until they're ready to go into the, the regular caging. But what I do in the brooder is I will line the bottom of the brooder with uh, pine shavings. And I will also put a little, I got a six inch square ceramic tile that I place in the bottom. And I will set the water bottle on top of that ceramic tile. And basically what that tile is doing, one, it helps the stabilize the bottle so it's not gonna wobble around and fall over, but also it keeps the chicks from kicking pine shavings and whatnot into their water. Uh, as far as feeding the chicks, uh, for the first couple days, all I'll do is set a piece of paper towel on top of the uh, pine shavings, and I will pour their feed on top of the paper towel. For the first couple days of feeding your chicks, what I do is I will grind up their feed. I take uh, a 30% game bird starter. I will put a cup or two of that in the blender, blend it up, and then I feed that to them for the first couple days. It just, it's a little bit easier on their digestive system and, uh, and their crop. So once they have uh, gotten a week or so old, you don't really need to grind their feed up anymore. They'll pick through the larger crumbles and the ones that they don't eat, they'll actually get big enough to where they can eat the larger ones. So uh, your birds will stay, like I say, in the brooder uh, until they are fully feathered out. Once they're feathered, they can be moved out of the brooder, can be taken off the light, and placed into your regular uh, caging system, and uh, go from there. Um, I wanted to go a little bit more in on feed. Uh, the chicks will be on the game bird starter, which is the 30% protein, from the time they hatch out until the time they start laying eggs. Once my birds start laying eggs, I switch them over to a 16 or an 18% layer formula. Um, it's got a little bit less protein, but it's got more calcium. And they need that calcium to help them develop good, strong eggshells. So, I think that pretty much covers it, guys. That should get you started. Um, there's a lot of videos online that can help you a little bit more in detail on all of these subjects. But I basically wanted to lightly touch on these subjects so you had an idea of what you need to start out with, uh, what you need to know as far as uh, you know, setting your eggs, incubating your eggs, getting the chicks out of the incubators and into the brooders, and then out of the brooders and into their normal housing. So uh, I hope this was uh, helpful to some of you. Um, I know it's a very basic uh, video, but there are several people out there who are just getting started with Caternix quail and have no idea where to look or where to start out with and what equipment they need. So. Uh, guys, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you will get notified of any new and upcoming videos if you hit that notification bell along with it. Um, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. We've also got a uh, Caternix Corner live show that we do every Tuesday uh, right here on the YouTube channel. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we bring in uh, guests from all over the U.S. and actually all over the world uh, to talk about their quail setups and uh, to give you a little bit of idea how they do things. So guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, like I say, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.